I, I, I got some venting to do as well. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchu alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host Chamber. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? I am, you know, meh, meh. You know, I'm, oh, okay. no. I'm okay. What? <laughs> what? We okay. are, uh, um, how could you be meh? ETH is at an all-time high. Things are cranking. We are up from last week where we were. We uh, Last week at this same time, we were doom and gloom about how the week went uh we're opposite of that this week um and you're meh huh yeah yeah i mean not obviously crypto wise is good you know uh oh wow so there's some real life stuff going on here (laughs) so okay lay down lay down right here and tell tell therapist bunch you what's going on so (laughs) so uh yesterday um i had a uh I'm doing some finance stuff, you know, switch with the new job or, you know, potential new jobs. I'm, I'm doing some financial things, kind of getting everything, everything right. And one of those things is uh, updating my life insurance, mm. uh, more coverage, right? Right. I am significantly worth more alive than, or more dead than alive at this point. Right. As, uh, as one should be, right? Like that's... <laughs> Many folds over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the uh, so so I'm, I'm talking to uh, to somebody from the insurance company. They're like, okay, we're going to call you tomorrow. You know, we're going to this is on Wednesday. They said we're going to call you tomorrow. Uh, if you could have the height and weight of your kids, your <laughs> wife, and you know, and yourself, and I'm like, okay. So yesterday morning we get up. I'm like, okay, I take out the tape measure. My da- my oldest daughter's four foot one, fifty three pounds. Okay. okay. My my second daughter is three foot two, thirty five pounds. Okay, you're like a, I would I would give you like a solid four and a half inches. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> my wife five foot seven, a hundred and twenty eight pounds, uh, and then I'm not gonna say mine. But what I did is I started adding up. <laughs> wait, other... wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You gave your girl, you gave your wife's weight, you gave your wife's height and weight on a yeah. public platform and you're not going to share your it's own? It's not like she's 200 pounds. That's a nice weight. <laughs> <laughs> I would be proud of that weight if I was a, a lady. All right. Uh, she, my wife is a very attractive uh, lady with a good height. Yeah, you height all kicked your coverage there. Weight. Yeah, um, you way all kicked your coverage. <laughs> <laughs> so I started adding it up and I'm like, like... I'm like, what was that? What's that? What's that? So I'm like, well, uh, so 35 pounds uh, plus, you know, uh, 53 pounds. Uh, one second. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you live. 35 plus 53 plus 128. Uh, oof, I was good. told there'd be no math. <laughs> it's 216 pounds. Oh, come on. I, uh, I am. I, I, I see where this is going. <laughs> If you take the people in my family and put them on one scale and you put me on the other scale, it's not even close. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was, uh, so I. I would be uh, slightly under. I would be slightly <laughs> under your family. Wait. I wish. Uh, so I, I, I clocked in at about a, a solid 283. Oh my God. I know. No way. Yeah. Six foot four, 283. Little, little much. Uh, and one of the questions was have you gained more than 10 pounds over the last 12 months and i lied to that lady's face <laughs> like, no no we're in the ballpark it's usually my fighting weight <laughs> so, holy crap you're uh, like a fucking uh you you could be a linebacker i mean a, a lineman i mean if i was like uh, a little taller like i'd be like a, a nice a, a good Six size four is pretty pretty tall like, i watch could... a lot of basketball and like a lot oh, of these guys nfl i'm talking nfl you could be yeah, a lineman maybe... 
because basketball makes me feel bad about myself because I see a lot of guys like 6'10", 215. I'm like, what the Yeah, fuck? right. What are, you, exactly. what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm, I'm like a magic eight ball. <laughs> you just roll me around. I spit out some words every once in a while. That's it. <laughs> so I have to lose, you know, roughly 65, 70 pounds just to get to a weight where if the other three members of my family were on a scale, it would be an even scale. Well, um, you know, the benefit here is that you have small children. So eventually the, the curves will meet, right? You're, as, you, as, you, as, you, as long as you like stop gaining weight, yeah, right? You're, and start maybe losing some or staying the same, eventually they will all, you know, they're, all, they're going to gain some weight, you know? So the curves will have to meet. So I immediately had to uh, uh, have one of those come to Jesus moments. Um, you just after. went. You went to Wendy's and ordered a salad. <laughs> no, I didn't. Eat. I'm like, okay, what do I gotta do? So it was oatmeal from the for breakfast uh, in the morning, skip a lunch altogether, and then dinner, and then nothing else. So. I'm on like two days, three days straight of skipping lunches because I I did really well the last couple months. I've lost like 17 pounds myself. Really? And then, yeah, in the last couple of weeks, I like I was putting some back on, so I'm like, all right, I need to get back in the game. I know? haven't I haven't taken out the uh, the old scale uh, since get since COVID. Like, so like, the the key is uh, honestly the key is to weigh yourself every day. Yeah, so that's exactly what I did. So I I started doing like the little. Ch- and you know what I found that's worked. And it's more, me. it's not about like, it's not because you want to see how much weight you're losing every day. It's that you want to make sure you're not gaining anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, you, you can yell at yourself like you fat piece of shit. You're like, oh, I, it, today's a lunch skip day. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I also do like, I've seen pretty good results using like a tracker and stuff. Uh, so yeah. I'm like, oh, I started tracking my food. And, uh, know, I would recommend the program Noom. Noom. Yeah, it was like 55 oh. bucks for like six months, which uh-huh. is easy. And it like really just teaches you how to like what kind of foods are better for you. And I like so it's not like a, I mean, it's a little restrictive. They give you a calorie count per day or whatever. And but it wasn't difficult to, to do. And then it's like once you learn the, the, the different types of, you know, ways that your food is, you know, uh-huh. like you're like, OK, well, I can still be, I'm not hungry. You know what I mean? I'm just making a better choice and I'm still losing some weight. So that's what I did to lose my 20 pounds ish. That's good. I mean, I got to lose, I I could lose 60 pounds and still be significantly overweight. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you don't like, you don't look it though. Now we do like a video show now and you don't look. Oh, I look like a piece of shit on the video. Uh. (laughs) No, you don't. Which is, which is really funny because I, I said on our intro the other day that the only show on the internet, you can watch me get fatter every week. (laughs) That was the funniest intro like i listened to that like five times in a row i'm like fuck that is funny like, it was funny because i was like i was genuinely wild. each time i listen literally every week i so think i i think i look fatter so the camera adds they say the camera adds 10 pounds i was using six cameras it's like <laughs> <laughs> i think or at least that's what i'm going to tell people but all right so the you know I know how that feels so I, I feel I feel bad for you but it, it really put in be... a, it, it really put into perspective when I had to, when I added up the other three people in my house and I'm like ooh it well, wasn't you even, know it wasn't even and close. now you're now you're having all of this generational wealth you need to be around to uh, to to <laughs> experience it you know between my generational wealth and my life insurance policy I think my wife just wants me to keep eating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's so funny. Uh, all right, so let's let's put a little uh, bright side on this. We have had a, I would say, a quality, very quality recovery in the crypto markets this week. Last mm-hmm. week, at the same time, we were down, you know, fifteen twenty percent. But two, uh, we recorded last Friday as well, right? So. Yeah. Uh, between last Friday and this Friday, seven days, Bitcoin up 9.5% at $56,111. So, you know, not back at 60, but uh, not down in the 40s like last week. So um, looking much better. ETH just crushing, cranking up 15% this week, $2,801, making all 
all-time highs. Binance makes me want to puke every time I see it. $623, (laughs) up 21.5%. So my sister-in-law has, I don't know about, I don't know how much she has. Um, She bought Binance at $5 and still has her coins. Goodness. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> That's that. Even if you bought three, right? Right. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like it's still pretty it's, good. <laughs> yeah, it's a mess around fun, right? Like it's yeah. uh, uh, XRP. What up forty one and a half percent this week? One dollar sixty six cents. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. And then we got Cardano up twenty. Dogecoin up twenty to thirty one cents. Polkadot up 11%, Uniswap back up 20%, uh, and Litecoin up 6.5% for the week. So a big recovery across most of the top 10. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's a nice, uh, again, versus Bitcoin, a little different, but overall USD is looking good. Um, I mean, just uh, on- What are we looking at for Bitcoin for uh, versus Bitcoins? Um, so, I mean, it's, like ETH is down just on the day 5%, but we got to like point, uh, 0.05 Bitcoin. So that's like halfway to all-time high on the ETH BTC pair. God, that would be nice, huh? That's insane. Like just, just to kind of give you some uh, some perspective, at the beginning of the year, so right Wasn't around... Wasn't it down in like the point 0.2? Yeah, point, one, point, uh, point, point. Oh, 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 one eight. Oh my God, like, it got down that low, huh? And now you're at 0. 0.4, uh, 0.048. Uh, it got to, I think it got to 5.2. Wow. Uh, or pardon me, 0. 0, uh, 0. 0.0102, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, your Sam, is doing. Your Sam coins look to be doing pretty well. Sam coins are doing all right. Um, you know, overall, I think pretty good. Uh I had an all-time high in uh, BTC value, I think, yesterday or the day before. But then BTC ripped a little bit, so that's come down a little. But USD were kind of f- flat when you're when you're comparing the two the two days. Um, so here's something I just noticed. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, you know, Binance, we were just talking about $625-ish. Yeah. Uh, it is the number three ranked coin with a market cap of $96 billion, uh-huh. uh, $96.3 billion. I did not realize, I knew there was a Binance US exchange, obviously. I did not realize they had a separate token. So they have Binance USD. Um, is that a stable coin? Yeah, that's their stable coin. That's what you use on like Pancake Swap and okay, like, uh, got it. BSC. Right. I'm like, why am I not buying that? <laughs> yeah, that's their stable coin. I think I, I think I played around with that uh, a little bit, uh, kind of when that started popping off. It just, I, I, I don't. Know. The whole Binance BSC ecosystem seems sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Not your, not your cup of tea on an ecosystem. No, front, no, huh? no. It, it, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, like, just yeah. imagine, imagine like the all the shenanigans that were happening on Ethereum with like you know pump and dumps and like fake you know, right? <laughs> DeFi projects. Now, ta- imagine a separate chain that has basically zero fees. Like, how bad do you think it could get? You know what I mean? Uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's seems, crazy. Seems messy, right? Yeah. Seems crazy. Interesting. Well, I mean, uh, so what's your what's your take here? Where are we where are we going? You on last week's episode, you said we're bouncing straight to seventy five thousand on Bitcoin. Well, you think you still think we're doing that? Um, I do think we're doing that. Like, I think it's like the whole market just you taking like a little headed, nice. You think we're headed to five k on uh, Ethereum? Five k, yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> it it could happen. Uh, we have we have broken resistance on ETH. I mean, there's a little bit of a like if we can get to that point. I'm just looking at the chart here, like 0.08 between. That could happen. That could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, on, on on the B, ETH BTC because all oh, it's all relevant, right? Like it's all right, right, right. Yeah, right. Because the, the the price of the of Ethereum is based on its relativity. It's its relativity to Bitcoin, right? So mm-hmm. if Bitcoin goes up in price and ETH maintains its relativity to Bitcoin, then, then the price that ratio goes, up. goes down. But if it beats BTC, uh, which as it a, has been, exactly, then you know the the, the possibilities are are there for like a five thousand dollar 
Vic, uh, Ethereum. So I, I do think, I mean, 5,000 um, is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to get is to. Is it a lot? I mean, where are we at? 2,800 now? Yeah. yeah. It's under a 2x. It's enough, though. It's a big move for Ethereum. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, but, but I mean, I, just, I feel like I, in the grand scheme of things, five thousand dollars. Eventual, is, yeah, yeah. I is, think honestly, probably ten thousand dollars is eventual um, in ETH. But like, I, I, for five thousand, I just don't think it's going to happen like next week. No, no, uh, right? Of course, yeah. You know, I, I'm thinking more. You know, end of year type. But time even frames. that being said, like I say, not end of week, but. When things start moving, it's like it takes three days. Like oh, yeah, something, sure. can, something can go from zero to hero oh, in three it was days. Two thousand dollars the last time we talked. Like, right, we talked. It was two thousand bucks. You know, mm-hmm. so um, it is. Yeah, it's. We've seen it all before. It goes very quickly. Um, but all right. So what are what have you been up to in the markets this week? Anything specific? Have you made any moves? What are not you really doing like I I've, I've been kind of like poking my head around, seeing if there was. I like to follow trends, um, and I think I've said it in the past. This actually brings up a pretty good point. Um, but I've said in the past that uh, I've seen people in the space kind of stick to one thing. And then that thing kind of dies out, and they're just stuck in the past. And they didn't, they didn't adapt yes. to what crypto is, or yes. you know what I mean, like the the trend that it was going. So, it happen, you, know, you see it happen with like uh, I think you see it happen in magnitudes faster in like the NFT space too. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, so if you're not adapting and you're married to one thing. Um, you know, we've seen it in Bitcoin. Obviously, if you're married to Bitcoin, you're Bitcoin maximalist. I think you're going to be okay in the long run. You just may not make the same. You sure, know, but their goals probably aren't the same, right? Like exactly. You, you know, that's different. But, but you know, we had we had guys married to. Uh, I would know, say I, Bitcoin, Ethereum. That you know, you're yeah, you're you're fine. For, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, we got we saw people uh, get snuffed out by ICOs and just kept chasing, and then it was DeFi and they just kept chasing, um, and you know you could have made money in DeFi, but you know you still see people shilling kind of the same bags as they were six months ago, and you know it it may work out eventually, but there was definitely gains to be made on maybe something else had they just pivoted. Uh, for a couple of months into something else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then and then revisit those old projects that they really liked uh, once they've kind of, you know, uh, found a bottom and, and started to recover. Um, so, yeah, you're seeing it more and more. Uh, so I, what I try to do is try to keep up, you know, keep an eye out um, for different trends. I'm not seeing anything right now. I mean, right now it's it's BSC shenanigans in my opinion so like some people are making money on uh, uh binance smart chain um i you know i i kind of strapped my wagon to the uh, ftx horse that's oh that's doing well but at the same time i i don't want to stay you know married to it like if there's an opportunity pancake swap is up 65 percent this week <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy uh so yeah, so that that one just seems too risky to oh, me. Oh, how about this one? We didn't talk about this one. Mm-hmm. Matic Polygon, right? Eighty-seven Matic. cents up a hundred and forty-three percent this week. Yeah, and I I'm kind of kicking myself. I probably should have took a position in that because same. Uh, you know, we knew what was coming. You know, with Zed and we uh, did. That's so that's so frustrating. I I told myself to get a position. I never did, and. Um, you know, I, I think happy. my problem right now is uh, I've kind of had to rebuild my entire crypto position, period, mm-hmm. right? Like after I bought my house, all that stuff, right? So right, I exactly. Of, I pretty much started from scratch. And uh, so I'm just now getting back to the point where I have some liquid throw around. Sure. ETH, you know what I mean? Yep. Like where I can take positions and move quickly like you're talking about, right? And so, you know, before, yeah, we knew the writing on the wall was Matic because of these things that we were into that are using Matic. We're like, okay, this is going to be a thing, right? Um, well, and it, made, and it made a lot of sense, right? Like the the, uh, the usability was pretty easy. Um, and, 
the the amount of people that were going to be using it i think was was in a pretty high number as well yes exactly like you could see that coming right and then yeah. but i had all my capital at the moment tied up into you know the game that we were playing right that yeah. was using matic and uh well, you know, it's just opportunity cost. It's not like I'm lost money by not. Right, exactly. It. It's just exactly. Uh, it's to your point. It's what's the trend right now? How can I? How can I balance everything? Um, because I think you're right that it is very much a game of. Uh, you know, there are some long-term bags you want to hold, but if you're gonna be, you you have to be able to be. Uh, you know, you got to be able flexible to, to, yeah, and do the in and out, uh, you know, type of moves. As and, well. and don't and like we always say, like, don't become a community member. Right. Um, like, it's fun to be a community member. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but well, at the that's same why I like being an NFT community member because it's at least <laughs> at least at least fun. Like at least I'm playing a fucking game at the same time. You know what I mean? Like you know, right? <laughs> and, and what I you know, and people do this in real life all the time, right? They get blinded. They love something so much. They 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 they're, they're, they have tunnel vision. They can't see the writing on the wall, um, and it gets them stuck. And you know maybe they should have cut their bags a little earlier, um, or you know pivot out into something else. Um, but yeah, you're seeing that you're seeing that lots. Um, I wanted to bring up something. I don't know if this is related or not. But um, did you see the Nita coin uh, tweet? I yesterday? did. How crazy is that? Right? Like, is that real? Like, I messaged them. We got a couple of these stories today, by the way. Um, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to, I don't know if you wanted to pull it up. or Yeah, I got it here. Um, we, have so, a we have a couple of these today. Did, oh, there's a, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a couple of these today. Um, but, I mean, friend of the show, Nidacoin, um, hadn't tweeted for a while, at least a solid month or so i'm just oh yeah so it went, his last tweet was uh, march 18th and then yes yeah, so over a month so yesterday um put out a little wavy emoji and then followed that up with uh got tons of dms wondering where i've been lately in summary i got cleaned out uh, i got too comfy and i made mistakes and left myself vulnerable uh been a dark period in my life uh but all will be better with time need a coin 2013 to 2021. Uh, so <laughs> I, I don't know if he's done on Twitter, if the Nidacoid Anon character is now deceased. I, I don't know what this means. I DM'd him. Um, you know, we uh, we chat once in a while. Um, he's, you know, he's been a good friend of the show. Um, I haven't heard back from him yet, so I don't know if maybe he's retiring Nidacoin. Uh, but that's sad, man. That Nidacoin, man. I know. Like, that's, you know, that's, that was... Legend. He was I couldn't, legend. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. So. But what, what the reason I brought this up, and I don't know for a fact like what happened, but is it one of those cases where you know he got married to the 2017 stuff, or you know what I mean? Like, I, who knows what happened? But you know, he was a guy that you didn't really see pivot into DeFi very much. I noticed uh, mm -hmm. when DeFi was happening. You know, he wasn't an NFT guy, and I can see not getting into NFTs. That that that's understandable if you're like a yeah, like a true you're, look. You're allowed to tell me NFTs are stupid. I, I love <laughs> them. I know it. I know they're stupid, but I love them. They're not stupid. <laughs> they're not stupid. I don't. Some of them. Said. Some of them are. It's just. It's just like anything else, right? Like some of them just seem super scammy. Um, right, of course, of course, and, yes. you know, and some of them are good projects, you know, like like we talked about Zed earlier. Like Zed is just it's an awesome thing. Um, it's it's very cool. It's very you can tell it's not a you know there's intelligent people behind it trying to make something cool uh, mm -hmm. and and usable and it, it 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 makes sense. You know, same thing with these big uh, you know multiverse uh, programs uh, and projects that are that are coming out. That makes sense. But when I see somebody, like I was reading, looking for news articles today, and I saw a news article just about like uh, people uh, making NFTs of old memes from Twitter, like Grumpy Cat and stuff like that, and like dude, just, they're selling for freaking hundreds and hundreds of this thousands is a, of dollars. This is, dude, uh, you know, like old memes from everywhere, like yeah, uh, overly attached girlfriend, overly attached for, girlfriend, yeah, <laughs> overly attached girlfriend sold for like almost half a million dollars. The uh, one with the girl, like with that uh, sly look when everything's on fire, the house right, across right, the street, yeah, yeah. Um, 
the like stuff like that um all selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars is that insane or what i mean how explain to me how that makes any sense uh it doesn't it does it, like it that doesn't make any sense <laughs> right to me like the, the nfts that are really obviously i mean they should be suspicious to everybody are the ones that are just taking an like a picture and then calling it an nft and then selling it with no utility with no like that's insane what are you doing like why are you buying that like, like it, makes, it makes sense to um, the person who it, the meme is of, right? That has been used around Twitter, passed around Twitter for, you know, decades. Like, right. I think Leave Britney Alone sold uh, for a lot of money last week, you know. But like, so those people finally getting paid for their likeness. That's, no, that's that was okay. the other thing. I, I didn't get into it, but are they are the are like... The people getting paid are the people from yes, the memes. Yes, okay, yes, so yes. I mean that's the, it's a cash people, grab. It's a right. cash grab, but of it's course. at least they're getting the money for it. So, you know, right, which is like okay, that at least makes sense. But yeah. like beyond, but the person buying it beyond, uh, who knows? Like, what are they ever going to do with that? They're, they're, like, how could you just like? <laughs> like, I just don't understand. Like, you could just save the image on your computer. Like, you <laughs> look there is so we're in this like uh, baby universe of like what nfts are going to be right like, right right now this is the, the what you're seeing is like the art and memes and stuff like that and that's like in my opinion the first iteration of what this is going to be right and mm -hmm. you're gonna see the I think what it's going to evolve into, and even like the celebrity things that are coming out there, those are a lot of those are cash grabs, right? Like mm -hmm. the what this is going to evolve into is social currency and community and all of that kind of stuff, right? Where you're the brands and and artists and things that are going to do this well are going to be creating things that have value in perpetuity for the owner of the token right right so whatever that means because at the end of the day it's not the jpeg that's attached to the token it's the token right like what is that representing so if for example it's a celebrity that says you know you buy this token and if you're holding it on if you're holding it on the day of my show in Cleveland uh, anybody holding it that day is going to uh, have a meet and greet with me right right now, now exactly. you've created value to somebody who's bought it and you've created a secondary market for uh, somebody who wants that access right and mm -hmm. or, or things like that so you know I think that's kind of and that's again just a really simple example but like that's, I think, what you're going to see all of this evolve into from a art, I guess, or the like the cash grabs will evolve into that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, but at least that's how I see it. So who knows? Um, but uh, what else we got going on? We're going we're gonna to get to a, a little bit of news here. I think we should. Okay, so let's do it. Let's get to the news. All right, start us off, my friend. Well, let's pivot. I mean, we were talking about NFTs. Let's let's talk. There's a little NFT news here. Um, Hasbro. I don't know if you're familiar mm. with Hasbro. Oh, of course. They're they're messing around in the NFT in the NFT world now. Uh, in Q1 of 2021 earnings call, uh, Hasbro CEO Brian Goldner said the toy company is pursuing non fungible token opportunities, especially in the digital game sphere. So kind of what we're talking about, maybe that mega you know uh, multiverse kind of kind of game. Well, like yeah, sandbox. But, yeah, but th I think what they're doing, which is uh, what this says here. Um, is they're talking about Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. which I believe right. they own, which is a huge uh, IP. You know what I mean? So um, the the quote from the CEO here is, uh, "We are really 
We have really our arms around this and see multiple opportunities on the NFC on the NFT side. Uh, Golden said in the call, we are actively developing our opportunity here. And we do see this as uh, substantial. So as you mentioned, Goldner was particularly referring to the success of Magic the Gathering, MTG franchise, a fantasy game composed of collectible cards, as well as MTG Arena, a digital version of the card game is available. Um, Interesting. So, so, I mean, like this, I think this would do fantastically well because, and then you just look at what Tops is doing with the, the, the baseball cards which really don't have much utility other than their baseball card, the, ba- the right. digital versions of the cards, right? But um, And the people are collecting and flipping just like the regular card market, right? Mm-hmm. But like Magic is something people collect as well as there's a game behind it. So I think this could be, uh, you know, some huge potential because everything you can collect has uh, utility automatically because you could be playing the game, right? And you don't have to worry about like some of the things in in with that is you know you have magic cards uh that people either collect or grade or whatever that aren't used for gaming the game but Mm -hmm. uh like that's because people are worried about their condition right like so they don't want to use them (laughs) they don't want to be played right they don't like they want to keep the condition of the card mint exactly right? so, yeah, yeah yeah like you don't have to worry about that here you could play and collect the rare card and you know not have to worry about it and not have to worry about condition and all that kind of stuff which i think is pretty interesting i have a question for you mm-hmm. i'm reading this article here how how is magic spelt in magic the gathering uh is I it regular have... regular yeah. magic yeah. Okay, because that's how they have it spelled here. I thought there was like a K in it or something. No, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, it's not a... <laughs> I thought there was a crypto that spelled it that way. Oh, really? I don't know. Um, for some reason, that's popping into my head. Let me look here. But did you yeah. ever play oh, like no. Magic the Gathering or like... What's, what's the other... Is that the, is that the I had one? Magic cards when I was a kid. I actually have some sitting next to me because I found a whole stash of cards at my parents' house from when I was younger. And uh, But I never really got into the game of Magic. Like, I, I wasn't my interest. Like, I was more of a Pokemon guy when I was younger. I, yeah, yeah, I missed... I didn't get Pokemon. Uh, my daughter makes fun of me because <laughs> I'm like a boomer. Like, I was like, I'm like, oh, a Pokemon? Uh, what's it called? <laughs> It's so funny because you're only a couple years older than me, but like those are things that you missed, right? Like, to- like ju- just- I must have just missed it because like I remember, like yeah, I got stepbrothers and stuff like that that definitely played uh, those. I have no frame of reference when it comes to Pokemon. Like I, I don't know Interesting. anything. I don't know anything about. Like I know like Pikachu is the yellow one. I don't know the guy's name. Ash, and that's like catch him. His name's part of me. What? Ash. Ash, yeah, no, I Ash catch him. You could have held a gun to my head, I would have never got that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Interesting, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, well, Hasbro is getting involved, so we'll we'll keep an eye out for Mm -hmm. Magic, the Gathering cards uh, on the blockchain NFTs. That's pretty cool. Um, We had uh, we had the NFL draft last night. Did you know the draft was last night? Uh, just because Twitter was talking about it, that's the only reason I knew. So we've got some sports news. We actually saw two actually, really before, interesting. So I have a, I have some NFL related questions actually. Before you read this, um, it's called the uh, touchdown. Oh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> not a dunk. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> they kept on Twitter yesterday. Um, so there was a couple of things. I, I kept seeing the odds for like the number one pick. Like Dar- I think it was Darren Ravel uh, that was putting out some tweets saying like if you bet fifty thousand dollars, like you would only net like eight hundred dollars or something like that on like yeah, number yeah. one pick. Uh-huh. Like it was so certain. Um, but there was I ke- I kept seeing this picture uh, of this like this little boy that looked maybe <laughs> fifteen years old. <laughs> And Dude, then with- <laughs> I said the same. I sent that picture to my brother and said he's getting ready for the prom. <laughs> so, and they kept they kept juxtaposing it to uh, this big big man uh, who looks <laughs> who looks to be about my size and weight, but all muscle. Um, and he's like, this guy's getting ready to play this guy. And I didn't know who the, uh, the like the the little white kid was. Who's who's he? He is Zach Wilson. He uh-huh. went number two overall. Oh. He is the number two pick overall to the New York Jets. He's a quarterback. No, he's not. He looked like he was Dude, 150 he looked, pounds. I, you know, like 
football is played with a helmet on, right? So, like, you don't really notice uh, what a lot of these guys look But like. I've seen quarterbacks. Like. They're big <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, dude, he looks so young. Like, I said this. But thing. also small, too. Like, how tall is he? Uh, that I don't know. Um, like, like it, from what I've seen, like I look, I think of guys like you know Peyton Manning and and you know your 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 typical quarterbacks. Like they look like me. Like Ben Roethlisberger is like a bigger version of me. Like you know, yes, Ben uh, Roethlisberger is a big. Like that's big, a monster big, guy. Big. So I feel like I'm an average size quarterback, and that kid. That was, that saw the picture of yesterday. Looked like he was the starting point guard of a JV basketball team. <laughs> he's he's six three. Okay, he's but twenty one like, years old. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, let's get back to the story. I just wanted to know. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> uh, also, apparently, Zach Wilson's mom trends on Twitter after Jets select him in the NFL draft. So the uh, the Jets had the number two pick. Yes, and the Giants. How did they do? Did they do okay? Uh, they did okay. Um, I was kind of pissed because I wanted them to take uh this wide receiver that mm-hmm. from Alabama and um, roll tide. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he he got sniped from them. Uh, the pick prior by a division rival who, oh. who traded up. So it was totally pretty, get that. Totally yeah, get that. And and it was also another division rival that traded down. So it was just a oh. whole big cucking of the Giants that <laughs> unfolded before us. So then the Giants uh, the Giants ended up trading out. Uh, they traded down and got a, a, another wide receiver a little later in the uh, in the first round. But so okay. uh, you know, fine fine pick. But I was really hoping we didn't get we didn't get the guy I was really hoping for. But anyway, so we got NFL news with the draft. We have some NFL crypto news. Uh, a couple times this week, we saw number one pick, Trevor Lawrence, who was the quarterback from Clemson. He went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he signed a huge, He was the number huge, one huge, pick? Yeah. Oh, I thought the Raiders had the number one pick. No, Maybe they, I, uh, uh, the Raiders were decent last year. So oh, were they? Never mind. They draft, but, I don't know why um, I thought that. Jacksonville Jaguars had the number one pick, and they took Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. And... He had a huge endorsement deal last week with Blockfolio. Did you see that? So I I, I saw the, the NFL guy got a sponsorship with Blockfolio. I didn't know he so was the number, the number one number pick. That's the number one pick in the draft. So How that was that? the guy that was for sure going to be the number one pick. Yes, the that's were. Trevor Lawrence. So he wow. is, uh, um, uh, which I think is a big deal, right? Like uh, I saw a tweet. I can't remember who it was by. And I just, uh, I really feel bad because I would love to r- r- give the credit. But it was... It was let this sink in. The number one pick in the NFL draft holds Solana. <laughs> like, oh my god! Because he got paid out in a mixture of like Bitcoin, oh. ETH, and 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 Sol. Sol- and yeah. Sol? Oh yeah. my god! So, I didn't like, know that. I, I thought that was a great tweet. I can't <laughs> remember who it was by, but um, you know, so I, I you know that's important for visibility. Like Blockfolio in the number one pick, and Trevor Lawrence, he's like the hottest prospect to come out since. That's Andrew what I was going to ask you. That's what I was going to ask you. So okay, so maybe you answer my question already. So in the grand scheme of number one overall picks. Uh, if you were to rate, you know, <clears throat> he's the hype best. level out he's of ten, the, he's the biggest hyped quarterback to come out since I would say Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck, I know, was super hyped. Like, and I'm he not even a football hyped. guy. He was super hyped. So he more like Cam Newton, guy. like more than like a. Uh, I would say yes. I feel like Cam Newton was pretty hyped coming out. Um, yes, but uh, he, but this is even even greater than that. I think so. Yes. Wow. Just from a skill level as a quarterback, and interesting, passer and everything. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, Sean Culkin of the Kansas City Chiefs becomes the first NFL player to convert his entire salary to Bitcoin. Um, so. A, according to the press release shared with the Block Crypto, uh, the entirety of Culkin's nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars salary will be paid weekly in USD installments and converted instantly to Bitcoin via Strike by Zap, an application that enables users to make Bitcoin payments using a bank account or debit card. So. I, I actually had questions about this when I first saw it, how it would get converted and right. if that's what was happening. 
And uh, so, yeah, it's getting paid to him in Bitcoin. And the team is doing the, the, the transaction and it's getting uh, transferred instantly. Um, he's got a quote here. Considering my career, particularly its physical demands and brevity, it makes the most logical sense to be paid in sound money that I believe protects its purchasing power over time, he said. Oh, God, I love this guy. Wow. <laughs> From a macro standpoint, I believe we are in the beginning stage of Bitcoin's shift away from being extremely speculative to a legitimate asset class viewed as a store of value. Oh my god! What? That's uh, what where, where did he go? Like what? Uh, he like what uh, he wasn't a drafted guy. I don't think oh, he was okay. already in the league. Um, okay. But he plays for the Kansas City Chiefs, who have been Excellent. in the Super Bowl back-to-back years. So another high-profile team. Um, Colkin is one of seven other or several other athletes converting their earnings to Bitcoin in December 2020. Uh, I think the biggest one here, uh, the biggest advocate so far has been uh, Russell Okung. Of who, course, yeah. Uh, we all know. And he also apparently, he I guess he uses uh, converts half of his salary. Um but he also uses Strike by Zap to do the conversion. Hmm. So I'm going to actually have to look into that. But anyway, uh, oh, he's been in the league, this guy, since 2017. Okay. And he studied finance at the University of Michigan. Mm, whoa. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> this guy might know what he's talking about. Oh, sorry. The University of Missouri. Oh. Uh, so. I was going to say go blue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't go blue. Yeah. And it, it, interesting. So there's one more quote here. Let's see. So many people now realize the high value of scarcity, which can be seen in Z and Gen Z and millennial groups growing interest in cryptocurrency. This isn't just a domestic play. It's global. And I hope to encourage and inspire other athletes around the world to consider that. Man, sign me up for this guy. I'm not kidding. Eh? This I'll, bu- I'll buy his NFT. <laughs> All day. <laughs> <laughs> I, g- I got one more news story here. Yeah. And it's not a new story I really want to read, but it's more of a conversation I want to have with you. Um, and it has to do with a CNBC article. So normally we, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll pick from the block crypto or maybe another cryptocurrency news uh, channel. But this is from CNBC, and I wanted to get your feedback on it. Um, the headline is Ripple CEO says the U.S. lacks regulatory clarity on cryptocurrency. So it's basically Brad Garlinghouse complaining that the U.S. Uh, reg- uh, regulations of the U.S. for cryptocurrencies are frustrating. Um, and um, is he, my question to you is, is he paying CNBC to get these types of headlines in their news, you know what I mean, in their in their news stream? What uh, do you interesting. think? Interesting. You think it's like mainstream <clears throat> media manipulation stuff? Like, why wouldn't he be? If you could, you know well, what I mean? They have been in the news lately because of what they've been doing with uh, these lawsuits, right? Right. So the SEC expected to argue that Ripple never registered XRP as a security before selling it to investors. Ripple says the SEC is fundamentally wrong as a matter of law and fact and argues it's a currency, not a security. So this is the thing. It's... it's uh, is it a currency? Is it a um, is it a security? And that's what the thing has been going. That's what you know. The argument's been around Ripple for a very long time, right? So mm-hmm. um, you know, it goes back to that whole debate. I don't know if they're. I, I I don't know. Like, what's the benefit? Is just to get Ripple get Ripple into the news. Is but I feel like Ripple's just one of those ones that, like, if people are getting into crypto, like, this because I feel it's I only mainstream positive news, though. No, no, but I feel like I only see Ripple news in like CNBC or you know because it's you're... A security. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, B BG. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I just it's. I only see Ripple news and like CNBC or like mainstream media news. Um, and I just find it weird. But 
I don't know. Maybe it's because they're ha- maybe you're right. Maybe it's just because they're just having the you know the SEC stuff. So here's as- what I don't get about this. Like he's arguing that it's a currency instead of a, a security, right? But and he's and there's a quote here that he says, "I think at the end of the day, the industry should focus on utility. And are these technologies solving real world problems for real customers?" And he said that Ripple will add a kit adding that Ripple will continue to leverage its XRP ledger and tokens to make payments efficient. So, like, I don't know if that's the right... <laughs> I don't know if that's the right argument for Ripple. Like, Yeah, I that tells me it's not a currency. And XRP tokens, right? Like, I don't see that, right? Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> I got I got my buddies texting me about Ripple today, and I'm like, I, I'm like, dude... I, you like I'm happy you're making money. That's not the point. I just oh don't. they have Ripple. Yes, they have Ripple. Oh, um, and I'm like I go. I hope it goes to ten dollars for you. I just yeah. never hold it. Like I no. don't. <laughs> you know, it's not my thing. So, um, you know, I'm more of a digital horse guy. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather own. Uh, I would rather own digital horses than than Ripple. Are digital horses securities? Is the question. Uh, or just no, they, assets. They definitely have utility, though. So, yeah. um, I don't think so. But uh, wait till you can fractionalize them. Then they, then those coins are would be securities. I would think, right? <laughs> uh, Many layers to the stinky onion. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed, my friend. So uh, that's all of our news we have. Um, but. So we we also had another wreck story, I think. Yeah, you sent this. Oh, one by to the me. way, I, I I didn't get to do my bitch session at the top of the show, so I, I did. lay it on me. So I had um, my work performance review this week. Blah. Yeah, and uh, it's March. What what is it? A quarterly? Or no, no it's, not. it's it's March. It's, it's basically May. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what I don't know what time we're doing. It's May tomorrow. Yeah, it's my twenty twenty one. Or it was my twenty twenty performance review. Okay, and uh, he <laughs> said, or so he, basically, every little box that he had to rate me on was a shit sandwich. Um, which is, you know, what a shit sandwich I'm, a, is, right? I'm aware of a shit sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> every single one, every single one was the exact same shit sandwich, which, uh, felt very, very low effort to me. Um, and then the craziest part in my mind was he, so, you know, you have like the meets expectations, uh, exceeds expectations right. doesn't meet expectations I, I think you're gonna laugh at this for work ethic <laughs> he, he gave me a doesn't meet expectations what yeah <laughs> i was like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> doesn't meet expectation yes not a not like a meets expectations with a caveat. So he just like first of all stomped your throat out from ever getting another position in the company because that goes on your you know permanent record and all right. that kind of stuff. Like anybody sees that, so I'd be like, what? What? <laughs> but uh, I would think you know you know me pretty well. I would say that's probably the least true thing about me. you <laughs> at at very minute on your worst day meet my expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would say that on your a, worst day, I would say that is an untrue fact that uh, that I have a bad work ethic. <laughs> um, so uh, that annoyed me. But that anyway. is very annoying. Now, do you do you like this guy? Like, I he's fine as a boss. I, I, it's not like we don't get along. Do you have the same problem as I do? Uh, I have. I don't know. Maybe it's like the Dennis Reynolds in me, but I feel. And, and I've, it's not every boss, but if there is any sort of like uh, chink in the armor of the boss, like like I don't think you're good at this, or I don't think you're as smart as you think you are, like I have an immediate sense of superiority over my, <laughs> and I and then I plot to basically get them fired and t- take their job. Like this is this is <laughs> this is what I do. Uh, you're I, a five oh, no, star man. I am a five star man. Uh, God damn it! Uh, I'm a five star man. Uh, no, but I I feel like you if if you've achieved like if 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 you're very good at what you do, 
you get nothing but my absolute subordination. Like I am, I am, I am on your team. I will fight to the death. But if there's any like, this is why I can't believe you're like dying to go back to corporate life. Like I can't. I like working for good bosses. It doesn't. But, yeah, but I would say most bosses aren't great. <laughs> like, like, well, I then I just very plot small to. Percentage. I slowly plot to take them out, and and I've done it over the. <laughs> I won't get into it, but I've definitely done it over the years successfully. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> just, just just talking shit about them to you know higher ups i'm like oh you know but just you know not not overtly doing it but just you know casually crushing their dreams uh of future <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, does not crazy. meet expectation <laughs> that's, it. that's funny uh well right. yeah no but that's why i can't i can't uh wrap my head around you wanting to go back to yeah. I, I would say I'd, I'd say a third of my bosses over the years have been like have met or exceeded expectations and then I'll go to the mat for them like I'm a, I'm if I'm on your team and I have full respect for you like we're yeah I, I'm I, I'm I'm ride or die uh so that's I like that but yeah interesting if, if you're if you're not fucking watch your fucking back <laughs> Uh, fair enough. All right. Well, we got one last uh, bit here that is something that I sent you this morning mm-hmm. um, that had been going around Twitter, and we would not be wrecked podcast if we didn't discuss it. Uh, you know, I, I feel bad for this person, but uh, it's a you know we it's okay. So this tweet went out at four twenty nine. So yesterday. Uh, at 4.36 p.m., mm-hmm. 567 retweets, 415 quote tweets, and 2,284 likes. And uh, the thread begins, a thread on how I went from 185 k to $0 in exactly three weeks. The person posted uh, his ETH address, so you can check out exactly what happened And here. it's funny, now that I'm looking at it, at first, I thought he was fucking around on the BSC, but if he's posting his Ether scan, then it can't be that, right? I guess. Um, yeah, it looks like it's mostly DeFi stuff. Oof. Okay. All right. Let's get into this. So he so, lost. So he lost, he went from one hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars to nothing to zero dollars in yeah. three weeks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> on That's, April eleventh. This is my all, nightmare, by the way. Eleven. April eleventh. Alt season was in full swing, and I was holding top projects with solid fundamentals like Radix. I don't, I don't even know what these coins. Are. Listen to me here. I, I mean, I, I obviously dabble in some shit coinery, um, maybe a little bit more than you do. I have not heard of one of these things. Okay, so, okay, so then we're we're already talking about very high risk. Stuff. But he he goes and says, holding top projects with solid fundamentals like yeah, like Radix DLT. EXRD, Everest.org. I mean, I don't. ALBT, Alliance Block. I don't know what that is. Uh, Graphlink Proto and Glow. Maybe I've heard of Glow. I feel uh, like I've heard of Glow. But um, and he says things were going well, but I wanted faster gains with smaller projects and was impatient. Okay, so there you go. So you wanted yeah. smaller projects than that, even. Is what he because said. yeah, so he's trying to he's trying to hit the lightning in a bottle, mar- micro micro caps, right? Right. So then uh, next, BTC started dumping, and I was too busy over trading on Uniswap, buying tops and selling bottoms. By April twentieth, he'd lost over fifty percent over trading shitcoin. So then he posts uh, what his account balance was. So it started at one hundred eighty-five thousand five hundred eighty-two. On this tweet, it's seventy-nine thousand. Thousand eighty-nine dollars. Um, so it's dropped half. Uh, then, out of desperation, on four twenty, I put a huge chunk of my portfolio on cash tag Snodge. Snoge, snoge, snoge. That's <laughs> it looks like Doge with like a snot with an S. Yeah. Okay. And made a partial recovery, but didn't take profit like the dumbass he is. So it had here. Uh, he had gone back up to 127,000. Right. Okay. Uh, but look, look at it. Did, did, did you open up Snoge? the image? What is Snoge? But he's got one called Crypto Cart. One called, one looks like Dog Diarrhea. Uh, Dogarrhea. 
One called uh, Piranhas. I, I don't know what this is. He's uh, got some ETH. Yeah. My, then the next tweet is, my portfolio had bottomed out on 426 at $32,000, and he took a gamble on cash tag cc which is crypto cart which allowed him to recoup some losses crypto cart says e-commerce on DeFi is what this uh okay what this says um which allowed him to recoup some losses so he then uh then today on this faithful day i sold cc and went all into cash tag micro which is micro launch pad mm-hmm. oh wow interesting at around 22 cents it started pumping and i was making a remarkable cover recovery and i tend to sell too soon so i kept holding things were starting to turn around he hit 104k so he went from uh, 32,000 to 104k by 9 30 a.m uh felt good about holding micro and went into work after a few hours, I decided to check Dex tools and saw the massive drop. Check Twitter uh, and confirmed rug. Uh, yes. So he actually, uh, in the tweet prior, he uh, ats Micro Launchpad and they have deleted their Twitter. It doesn't even link to it, an account. Uh, so he was able to salvage 0.8 ETH as liquidity was locked moral of the story don't be a dumbass he says he currently holds 93 crypto cart but it really hasn't fully registered might have to apply for a job at mcdonald's soon hope it was a good read for you what's your moral of this story i mean he's making a lot of bad decisions if i'm being honest uh at this point he has no bitcoin or ethereum like I'll mess around. I will, you know, bunch, you know me. I will ape with the best of them. Um, and but at the same time, I always have a, a, a little, you know, not a little, uh, but, you know, some. I have Bitcoin and Ethereum all the time in a separate wallet and it's hidden away. I don't touch it. Anytime you make big gains, you should be taking a little bit out and putting it away for a rainy day. Um, and this guy is like aping into the craziest projects, like small caps, like putting a hundred grand. And if, if your portfolio is worth a hundred thousand dollars and you're putting a hundred thousand dollars into a, a small cap, like that's, that's insane. That's insane on so many levels. Like, I, I don't know. Does, does this, what did you, th- what did he think was going to happen? Well, I got to say my big takeaway is that this wasn't trading, this was gambling. That's what it but is. But it wasn't even good gambling. But uh, most gambling isn't good gambling. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's the difference, right? Like most gambling isn't good gambling. But like you're a gambler? Um yeah. but most people don't go and say, "Hey, I have, I don't know. Uh I have I I have There are a lot of people that do that. <laughs> there are the, not a lot of good gamblers. Take a second mortgage <laughs> out on their home and just say, "Hey, let's Put it all on black. Uh, well, like that. I mean, no, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that bet their balances for sure. Ugh, that's like, insane. If you have a hundred dollars in your account, there are many people that will bet the hundred dollars. Really, I eh? rather than ten dollars. Right. Trying to build it. Correct. Right. 100%. Right. Wow. Uh, mo- a lot. A lot of people will do that. Um, so, I would say, and you know, this is one of the really difficult parts about uh you know altcoin investing how old do you think this it. guy is i don't know i uh, i mean look you have to have some kind of established uh you know is he younger than 25 or older than 25 i'm not really sure i feel like this is a young person because i feel these are young person moves like if you're if you're over thirty, I feel like you would well, never yeah. do these I things. I mean, the biggest thing is there's no capital preservation at all. Right. Like it's like just... there's, there's once you get old, like Bunchu and I. <laughs> I feel this, I feel bad for suit. the dude. I feel bad for the dude because it's got to suck to lose all of that money. Um, but you know, it would would not be wrecked podcast if we didn't talk about it. And 
on top of that, it's a lesson to other people. So if you are sitting out there right now and that is how you trade, maybe rethink how you trade, right? Don't do Uh, that. Oh, my goodness. I mean, literally the difference between a successful career trader and this is risk management. Literally, that's it. You know what I mean? And I would Uh, say like most, like I would say my risk management is shitty. Yeah. You know, (laughs) right. (laughs) And it's still light years ahead of this. Well, there's also a difference between risk tolerance and risk management. That is a good point. That's a good point. (laughs) So there's also a difference between risk tolerance and risk management um, and and capital preservation. Right. So, you know, uh, gamblers, unfortunately, have huge risk tolerance. Right. And are, you know, not always the best um, at doing that other part. <laughs> right. So, I, you know, like that's not I'm not calling this guy a gambler. I'm just saying what his actions were is uh, more gambling than trading is. What right. I think. You know, like you're, you're just throwing stuff at a wall like he had one hundred and eighty five thousand dollar portfolio. And in his first tweet says he wanted faster gains. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah, but it, yeah, it oh, sucks. yeah, that's crazy. Sucks, sucks, sucks. But anyway, all righty. I think that is going to do it. Oh, I did want to say one more thing uh, to you. I was having a conversation with my wife the other day <laughs> and she was talking about, um, you know, she, she asked me like, you know, who would you say is because you know my wife knows that i have i have a good amount of friends right Right. like i'm i had like 24 people at my bachelor party so she's like what she's like who would you say your best friend is and i was thinking about it and um i came to the conclusion that while i have a lot of friends i don't have a ton of like best friends you know what i mean right and uh i i almost couldn't even get it around my head that one of my best friends in the entire world is somebody I've literally never met. Stop it. You're going to make me fucking <laughs> and cry. So I had to tell you. I had oh to tell my you this God. Was a conversation We're going to hang up. With my We're wife. hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you uh, oh. for, you know, uh, for being a great friend, even though we've never met in person. So, okay. Uh, I want to I'll say the same thing because I don't have many friends. Uh, <laughs> I don't even have, I, yeah, I don't even have like, you know, a lot of, friends in my in my circle but yes no 100 percent. If, if somebody asks me i'm like yeah it's it's very strange but probably my best friend is somebody that i've never met in my entire life <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and, and thank you man. judging by the beginning of this conversation when we do finally meet we're gonna look like arnold schwarzenegger and danny devito oh, and twins jeez <laughs> i look like freaking i look like danny devito but in arnold schwarzenegger's body um <laughs> Yeah, uh, so. Speaking of it, my uh, my Danny DeVito art collection is coming along swimmingly. S- swimmingly. It's fantastic. <laughs> Both of those were sent randomly to me by one of my friends. That's uh, great. That's a good and friend. I almost think he just thinks that I wouldn't hang them up and he keeps like, it's almost like a dare. <laughs> it's like a dare now. You know what I mean? And, and so like now, now it's my fucking living room. Like challenge accepted. You know yeah. what I mean? And we've already picked out our next two pieces, which uh, I can't wait to reveal. So <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a full on rental room now so anyway that is gonna do it for us so i don't know we've been doing friday shows now i would think pretty regularly Friday's like a nice day to do a show too you know for, it is and it's mostly because we now do a show on mondays and then the rest of it like my midweeks are get are very tough for me to like break away to do a show so yeah uh we might maybe it's maybe it's friday now Who the hell maybe knows? it's <laughs> it makes a lot of sense I, I i agree we have a full week to to recap and you know, we can talk about all the shenanigans that happen next week at the end. It's of probably the not the best for downloads, but that's okay. I don't think it's hurting. It seems okay. to be good. Yeah, right. that's that what I was checking too. I was checking that too. Uh, but no, I think we're good. <laughs> all righty. Well, that's gonna do it for us. Until next time, don't get wrecked. And that is financial advice. Hey, everybody! Thanks for listening. You can help support us by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and become a REC patron by signing up for a monthly tier on Patreon.com. That's Patreon.com forward slash Wrecked Podcast. Don't get wrecked.